name is Justin Langan. I'm in my first year. I'm studying political studies and I'm running for a VP student life in an independent slate called Students First. Focused on three ideals, strength, communication, and accountability. Now what this slate is, is representing a change in how students are treated at the university. I'm offering a strong voice for student rights and a promise that their voice will be heard and echoed at the very top of the executive. So why elect the same thing that hasn't been working? It's time for a change. It's time, you know, to put students first. One aspect I really want to focus on is mental health. I'm a mental health advocate and I've won a national mental health award for youth. I helped create provincial mental health kits, attend national youth summits about mental health and help provide a Métis voice to the Mental Health Commission of Canada's Indigenous Youth Report. And I don't think there has been enough emphasis on mental health supports for students. Student mental health should be the utmost priority during this time, especially with the pandemic going on. For example, my eyes hurt constantly staring at a screen for eight hours a day. And I'm sure I'm not the only student feeling this. So is there any assistance in the health and dental plan for that? If there is, this should be communicated to the student body. If there isn't, why hasn't anything been done about that? There aren't enough counselors for students. The ratio on the University of Fort Gary campus is currently one counselor for every 2,849 students, according to an UMSU press release. I can say I don't feel comfortable paying a raised tuition for a lower quality of teaching. And many students have said the same. So I will push for more communication from the administration as to why students are paying for unknown fees and fees for services that they can't access. Students have paid a $60 tech fee. For what? On top of that is another $60 fee for sports and rec, when almost all students are forced to be remote learning. So why isn't there an opt-out option for these fees? Where is our money going? And speaking of money, late last year, the faculty requested a raise and they threatened to strike for it. Their union backed them up. Where's my union for my rights? The new upcoming budget for the UPASS program was steeply increased at a rate of $200 per term. Students need to know what they're paying for. And there's a lack of communication. And I think a lack of accountability for what UMSU does. And you know, the students need a strong voice for them. I was recently awarded um, an award for the top 25 environmentalists under 25 nationally. So I've had experience with youth advocacy for years. I've been my high school student council president. I've been sitting on the Manitoba Métis Federation's Provincial Youth Advisory Committee and Northwest Youth Advisory Committee since 2015. I've been on the RCMP Youth Advisory Council since 2018. I've been involved with the Jack of Mental Health Summit since the beginning of last year. I've also been involved with the National Associations of Friendship Centers on their Youth Engagement Committee. I'm editor-in-chief of the CART Métis Youth Newsletter and I'm producing and filming an elder and youth interview series. And I'm a student representative on the Art Student Body Council. So in all my experience, you know, I have been a voice for young people, a powerful voice that will work for and with you to change student life for the better. I think UMSU needs to be stronger. I think UMSU needs to be accountable for what they promise and what they don't do. You know, we look at slates, um, you know, they promise to get rid of slates. And we look at engagement and the amount of people running, there's only one slate and the majority of that slate are the people who want to become reelected. So, you know, students need to be able to hold them accountable. And there are individual candidates like me and others. I want slates to be out of here. I don't like them. Um, but yeah, I believe um, students needs to have more of a presence when it comes to decisions that are made by institutions like the University of Manitoba or governments that will negatively affect students like Bill 33. So in May of 2020, the UMSU exec, the majority of which want to be reelected this year, issued a statement opposing U of M's decision to increase tuition rates. And this was in the midst of the pandemic. So we knew that would, it would be here in the fall and you know, raising tuition fees and course fees. And they quote, pledged to establish a petition within the next few days, demanding an end to the province's cuts to post-secondary education end quote. I found no petition and I looked and I couldn't find this petition, which says to me, those elected by the students won't fight for the students and they have to fight. Let's talk about community representatives. So I'm part of the indigenous and LGBTQ2 plus community. So I know a crucial and important representation and consultation is 
I will work with Indigenous groups on campus to make sure that their voices are heard and authentic solutions are created. I'm an Indigenous youth. I worked alongside with Indigenous leaders for more than seven years. So I think I'm the only candidate running this personally dedicated to reconciliation. I will work to make sure Indigenous and non-Indigenous students work together to advance the truth and reconciliation call to action. I've seen no progress at all, you know, this past year um, with reconciliation and with meaningful work with Indigenous students. So I will make sure all Indigenous group voices are heard on campus and progress is made on all fronts. I will ensure that meaningful action happens on UMSU and that these communities are consulted regarding planning and support. I'm dedicated to real physical action that will assist in the success of Indigenous students and Indigenous culture.